SCP-3201. Well, it was low entropy while it lasted. Life is finite. This is a sobering fact for many, but it's a fact nonetheless. Regardless of thoughts about an afterlife, the concept of death is typically unavoidable, even in the SCP universe, barring some special circumstances. Whether it be the death of an individual, community, a world, or even a galaxy, it's an inevitable fact. In time, based on the laws of thermodynamics and the concept of entropy, it's theorized that our entire universe will eventually reach thermodynamic equilibrium, and nothing will be left alive. The SCP I'll be discussing today, 3201, relates to this concept although that won't be immediately apparent. SCP-3201 are a collection of extra-dimensional entities capable of sentient thought and movement, appearing in the form of luminous spheres of various sizes and colors. They first became known to the Foundation in 1944, after several aerial sightings of Foo Fighters, unidentified flying objects, over Germany, resembling Christmas tree lights. Although they were originally classified as naturally occurring phenomena, one of these balls of light would be discovered in 1959 to be a central figure of worship within an anomalous Melanesian cargo cult community. For reference, a cargo cult is a belief system in which members of a relatively undeveloped society perform rituals so that a more technologically advanced society will bring them goods. The community that worshipped this ball of light would offer stones, shells, gems, and animal bones chiseled into polyhedral shapes to the entity, and in return it would provide crates of canned food and various western manufactured goods. The entity is able to manifest these goods from nearby parallel universes, which the entities are able to traverse at will. In 1968, it was ascertained that the eigenstations that the Foundation had constructed to help with the energy requirements of dimensional containment operations had inadvertently acted as attractants for these entities. Fortunately, it seems that none of the 3201 entities are hostile, and so the Foundation soon began conversing with them. The communication between our species and theirs was rudimentary, but concepts and ideas could be conveyed. The intention of the 3201 entities is to collect and archive specific types of objects. Each entity is interested in a different type of object, and once found, they will switch preferences to a new object. They scour various parallel universes to find these objects, as not all universes contain the same things. One entity was interested in platonic solids, such as cubes or dodecahedra between 5 and 30 centimeters in width, with a preference for smoothness. Another entity was interested in dark green Wellington boots, another with spotted turtles, another with denominations of currency bearing the number 5, with a preference towards warmer colors. Some were also interested in more anomalous objects, such as seeds that developed into a floating plant and a weird metallic sphere that emits electromagnetic radiation and makes the ambient air around it 8 degrees Celsius cooler. On May 21st, 1983, workers in a ceramics factory in Guangzhou, China encountered a SCP-3201 entity. 34 witnesses report seeing a slightly indistinct sphere of light hovering in the air above the workshop floor. It gradually became more distinct, glowing like a light bulb. Although it didn't give off any heat, it was reported that the air around the sphere rippled like a heat wave. The sphere started to slowly circle the room, passing through several solid objects unimpeded. Nearly an hour and a half later, the sphere burned several traditional Chinese characters onto a wall, forming a sentence that roughly indicated that it wanted to trade money and gold or jars. The ceramics factory was working on Ming-era reproduction vases, so the site manager began communicating with the entity using yes or no questions. 
An hour later, they had made an agreement, and the entity proceeded to swallow 34 vases. Although how it exactly did this is unclear based on various reports. The entity then disappeared, although it returned 20 minutes later and began showering the workers with approximately 600 kilograms of various forms of currency. Some of it familiar to our world and China, but some of it in the form of banknotes featuring both Chinese and French and a silhouette of China, Mongolia, and northern Vietnam. The entity followed this up by dumping 1900 kilograms of molecularly pure gold in the forms of long cylindrical bars. Again, just for reference, based on the current value of gold, that amount is worth over 78 million dollars. The gold and the currency was later confiscated, however. The sphere then disappeared for good afterwards. Next, we see a memo written by the site director of Site 62, where the previously mentioned eigenstations are located, informing the O5 Council of the site's developments. The note says that the eigenstation project, which is now known as Project Ambriel, was successfully completed this month, in January of 1969. Ambriel is an angel said to inspire clear communication and the article previously stated that the Foundation discovered that the eigenstations were attracting SCP-3201 entities in 1968. Either the timeline is a little muddy, or the O5 Council knew before the site director what the eigenstations were doing. Either way, by August of 1971, communications between the Foundation and 3201 were well underway and were given a transcript of a conversation between the head researcher and the 3201 instance that was interested in spotted turtles. The entity is old enough to remember the formation of our galaxy, and describes the position of our sun using a massive system of coordinates. When asked how many years it's existed for, however, the entity only displayed confusion. It seems that the 3201 entities do not perceive time the same way that we do. The researcher then begins asking if the entity has seen any other civilizations apart from ours, which it has. It has itself observed only three of them, but there are others. The reason that it didn't look at any of the other civilizations is because they didn't have any spotted turtles. The last of these civilizations died off over five trillion years ago and wasn't in our galaxy or local group. The entity confirms that they came here because of the eigenstations, and they're here to archive any objects with low entropy, for the sake of a universal museum. They're preserving these objects from the inevitable heat death of the universe. We're then given a bit of a primer on the nature of the heat death of the universe by a Foundation scientist going over several historical legends about the process. In trillions and trillions of years, every star will die out, and even the black holes will vanish after slowly leaking out subatomic particles into space. By that point, the distance between one photon and its closest neighbor will be greater than the current distance between the Earth and the edge of the observable universe. This is the final fate of our universe. Things shift a bit after this addendum, providing us text saying that this is the end of Exhibit 2 sextillion, 914 quintillion, 802 quadrillion, 940 trillion, 784 billion, 178 million, 24,210. That number refers to the SCP document for SCP-3201, which was preserved by the Archivist. We're then given a report on our universe. Entropy increased as expected, but our universe managed to live far longer than expected, about 28,000 times longer in fact. This is due to extended entropy reducer activity, which eventually stopped after a significant proton decay. What are the entropy reducers? Well, it says that a group of 3,461,501,019 entropy reducers recreated a beacon. 
The Beacon is the Eigen Station created by the Foundation in the 1960s. The population of Earth in the late 1960s was right around 3.5 billion. The beacons used by the Archivists are apparently used by them to indicate a stranded entity in a universe, so fellow Archivists came poking around our universe, not finding any. They hung around though to preserve some of our stuff, and maintained contact with the people of Earth until the entropy reducers self-terminated for unknown reasons 116 years after initial beacon creation. The Archivists preserved nearly 7 decillion exhibits from our universe, including the 3201 article. So, for some reason, around the year 2085 or so, our entire world population will self-terminate. Self-terminate in this case doesn't necessarily mean we all commit suicide or something, as that's just how the Archivists describe it. It's possible a thermonuclear war will break out, or something set in motion by the SCP Foundation or another group will ravage the world. That gives us a pretty short lifespan, and yet our universe continued to exist far beyond what was expected. I'll leave that one to your imagination. After all that though, what was the summary of our universe? numbered 139331920100933 by the Archivists. They finish with, and I quote, It was mostly nothing, but there were some interesting parts. SCP-3201 are similar to the SCP Foundation, but far, far larger in scope, and with a simple goal of preserving as many low-entropy objects as possible from the inevitable death of countless universes. In the end though, it probably doesn't bring the people of these universes much comfort to know that at the end of all things, some boots, spotted turtles, and reproduction vases are being preserved. SCP-3201 really leaves a lot unanswered, such as where these things come from, why are they preserving these things, and what happens when they meet their end as well. Like I said, Life is finite, and ultimately so is everything we've created and accomplished. Whether there are alien entities preserving our stuff or not, it's important to keep things in perspective.